Well, greetings, everyone. And first off, congratulations on making it to this point in the MPA program where you are ready to complete and submit your student learning portfolio. My name is Dr. Powell. I'm the department chair for the Graduate Center for those of you who have not met me. Uh, I thought I would put together this quick instructional video to introduce you to the portfolio process and also inform you of some changes that become effective in fall 2019. So let's talk a little bit about the portfolio, what it is, and what's included in the portfolio. Now, as you probably already know, the portfolio is a culminating activity that will be completed after you have submitted your five case studies in PPA 697. But the portfolio is really something you have been working on since your very first course in the program in PPA 500. What we have tried to do with the student learning portfolio is to try and streamline the process to make it a bit more user friendly and a bit more intuitive, if you will, for both students as well as faculty. So some of the major changes that we have implemented in the process basically are threefold. Number one, we have changed, made some slight changes to the content of the portfolio. Number two, we have made some changes to how you submit the portfolio. And then number three, we have made some small changes to the case study submission and the portfolio submission due dates. So let's go through each of those three categories of changes. The first change is that we have changed a little bit the content of the portfolio. The portfolio now should consist of the following. First, you'll have a title page that will include your name and your student campus ID number. And that's all we need on the title page, just so we can identify you and we know whose documents these are that we are reviewing. So the title page. Then you'll have three separate parts of the portfolio. Part one of the portfolio will still consist of the initial skill self-assessment and the final skill self-assessment. The initial skill self-assessment, you complete it back in PPA 500. The final skill self-assessment you will complete in PPA 697 after you have completed and submitted your five case studies. The final skill self-assessment, as you know, is just a redo, essentially, of the initial skill self-assessment. The change here, though, is we are no longer requiring approval forms. So you do not have to worry about getting a signed approval form from your 500 or 697 instructor. Just submit the initial skills and the final skill self-assessment into a folder called part one. Then you'll create a folder called part two that will consist of your pre and post instructional assignments from the five core courses of budgeting, HR, org theory, policy, and research methods. So again, same type of thing that we used to require in the portfolio. The change here is again, no approval sheets. So you don't have to worry about writing around and getting instructor signatures on approval sheets. You don't have to submit any forms, just submit those pre and post instructional assignments from those five core courses into a folder called part two of the portfolio. Then you'll create a folder called part three, which will consist of your five case studies from 697. So 555, 577, 660, 670, and 696 case studies that you submitted on Beach Board for grading. You will then include those five case studies into part three of your portfolio. Again, no forms required, no screenshot of your grades required anymore either. We as instructors are able to get those grades off of Beachboard. So just the five case studies in the part three. So a title page and then those three parts will then constitute the student learning portfolio. So as you can see, we have tried our best to streamline the process to make it easier on you so you don't have to run around and try and get signatures from instructors. So hopefully, that will be more useful for you, this new process. The second main change is in the process of actually submitting your portfolio. In the past, we required the students submit their portfolios on flash drives, either mailing them to the department or bringing them in and dropping them off. It became a very cumbersome process for students as well as faculty. Uh, students were concerned that their flash drives were getting lost in the mail. Faculty ended up with drawers full of flash drives with nothing to do with them. 
So instead of submitting on a flash drive, we are now going to utilize SharePoint or what's called OneDrive. Uh, if you haven't used OneDrive yet, in a few minutes, I will take you step by step through how to use OneDrive to create your portfolio. OneDrive is accessible through the single sign-on process, which I think most people have used. It's available for students, staff, and faculty. Everyone has a OneDrive account, and I've included the link for the single sign-on process in this slide in case you haven't used it yet. Once you log on to OneDrive, you will then create folders for each of the parts of your portfolio. So you'll create a folder for part one, a folder for part two, a folder for part three, upload the required documents into each one of those folders. Once those folders are then populated with the required documents, you will then share those documents with your PPA 697 instructor. You will type in their email address, click share, that will then send an email to your instructor with a link. The instructor will click on that link and will be able to then review your portfolio submission. The nice part of OneDrive is that when your instructor clicks on that link to review your documents, an email will then be automatically generated back to you telling you that your instructor has reviewed your documents. So you'll be no more concerned about flash drives getting lost in the mail. You will get an email whenever your document has been reviewed. The third category of changes are some new due dates. Essentially what we are doing is we are moving the due dates up by a couple of weeks to provide more time for grading and more time to get everyone cleared for graduation. So if you are submitting in the fall semester, the case study drop boxes will now close on November 15th as opposed to December 1st, so a couple weeks earlier. Portfolio submissions are then due on December 1st instead of December 15th. So again, moving it up by a couple of weeks. Same type of idea for spring semester. April 15th is the new case study drop box closure deadline for spring semester. Portfolio submission deadline is then May 1st. So just make a note of those new dates, moving them up by a couple of weeks, just to make sure we can get everything cleared and taken care of prior to graduation. Some of the old portfolio rules, if you will, are still in effect. Your grade in 697, your final grade, will be the average of your grades on those five case studies. You are required to end 697 with at least a B average, so the minimum final average of your cases that's allowable in 697 is an 80%. This is not a departmental rule. It is not a university rule. It is a system-wide rule because PPA 697 is considered a culminating activity. Students at the graduate level must earn at least a B in their culminating activity course. So each case is out of 100 points, so a grand total of 500 points for 697. 450 and above would be an A, 400 to 449 would be a B. If you earn fewer than 400 points, less than 80%, then you would be required to retake 697. Again, it's a system-wide, not a departmental or a university rule. You will receive the same grade in both sections of 697, even if you take those sections in different semesters because the final grade will be the average of the grades on your five case studies. And then a final rule that's still in effect that's extremely important, you must submit at least three of the five cases by the Dropbox closure deadline in order to qualify for a grade of RP. And the RP, as you probably know, stands for Report in Progress. It is a placeholder that signals to enrollment services that you are making satisfactory progress on your cases. It does not count against your grade point average calculation. It is a placeholder until you complete your final case. Once that final case has been submitted and graded, we will then do a grade change to replace the RP with the average grade you have earned on those five cases. Now, this is extremely important. If you fail to submit at least three of the five cases by the, port, by the uh, case study deadline, you will not be eligible for an RP grade. Instead, you will receive what's called a WU. 
and a WU stands for an unauthorized withdrawal. Unauthorized withdrawals count as Fs for the purpose of grade point average calculation. So a WU is something you want to avoid at all costs because it can be devastating to your grade point average. So just make sure to have at least three cases turned in by the uh, Dropbox closure deadline, either November 15th for the fall or April 15th for the spring in order to qualify for an RP grade. So all those rules are still in effect. Essentially all that we have done is we have streamlined the process by removing those approval form requirements so you don't have to worry about getting instructor signatures. Hopefully it will make everything flow a little bit better and be a little bit easier for you. Uh, also as opposed to turning things in on a flash drive. So the major changes in addition to the due date changes are no more approval forms and your portfolio documents get submitted electronically using OneDrive. So let me go ahead and show you OneDrive if you haven't used it before and kind of walk you through step by step how to create these folders, how to upload your documents, and how then to share those documents with your 697 instructor. Okay, once you go to the website and you do the single sign-on process, you probably won't have as many choices here because this is the instructor interface, but you should have a tab for OneDrive. When you click on OneDrive, OneDrive will open up for you, which will then provide you with the opportunity to submit your documents electronically. Uh, again, the nice thing about OneDrive is that it's kind of one-stop shopping for sharing files with others. And also, once you share your files with your instructor, you get that automatically generated email so that you know whenever the instructor logs in to look at those files, you know that they have been reviewed so nothing has gotten lost in the cloud or out there in the mail. So when you go into OneDrive, you can create folders then and then include and upload your documents in those folders. So we'll just, you know, for illustrative purposes, I'll create a folder and I'll call it uh, Powell SLP, Student Learning Portfolio. So that's where my documents are gonna go into for my portfolio. So if I click on that, open that up, I can then create my folders. So I can create a folder for part one. I can create a folder for part two, and you get, you get the gist of this, so don't wanna bore you with it, but, and one for part three. So I've got my three folders created in my portfolio. I can then go ahead and start populating them with my documents. Now again, the first thing you'll submit will be your title page. Uh, you can either submit your title page as a file, or if you'd like to, you can go ahead and put it in part one. Either way is fine, whatever is more convenient for you. So I'll go and find my title page, drag my title page, drop it into part one, and it will upload, and there it is in part one. Then I'll go ahead and add in my initial skill self-assessment into part one, and drop that in there, and it will populate, and there it is. And then I'll put my final skill self-assessment into part one. And once that goes in there, I then have my part one is done. So all my documents then are in part one of my portfolio. Uh, I can then go ahead into part two and do the same thing with my, my pre and post instructional assignments for my five courses, drag them and drop them into there. Then go into part three, get my five case studies, drag them in, drop them into part three. And once I've done that, I then have all three parts of my portfolio populated with my required documents. Then when I'm ready to share it, I just click next to Powell SLP, which is the folder I wanna share. I click on share, and then I can type in the email for my instructor, which will be me. Put in my email there, oops, there we go. And I can put a message in there. So I have message, I'll just put my name, SLP, and my campus ID number. Oops. That's in my message. And then I click send. 
Off it goes. Uh, it's now been sent. My instructor receives it. My instructor will then click on the link that's provided in the email, will review my documents, will approve my portfolio, and is literally as easy as that. So I just want to kind of take you through the steps if you haven't used OneDrive before, so you can kind of see how it works. Again, a very, very simple process. Uh, when your instructor reviews and approves your portfolio, they will send that notice to um, Kathy. Kathy will then clear you to graduate through enrollment services, or at least note that your portfolio has been approved. Uh, if you're wondering when your portfolio gets approved, just take a look at your unofficial transcript, and as soon as the enrollment services gets the notice that your portfolio has been approved, you'll see a designation at the bottom of your transcript that will say graduate project completed. When you see the words graduate project completed, that means that your portfolio has been approved. And then if you have petitioned to graduate, enrollment services will then do a final grad check to make sure you have completed all of your other requirements for the degree as well. So that's the new portfolio completion and submission process. I hope the video has been helpful for you. If you have any questions about the process as you are working on your portfolio, feel free to send me an email at david.powell at csulb.edu, and I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Otherwise, good luck with your portfolio, and we look forward to reviewing your portfolio submissions.